the platysma muscle. What a confusing muscle. It's so small but so big. Nobody knows what it is. Can somebody draw a picture of a platysma? Nobody really knows what it is. But it has such an important role in my facelift and neck lift practice. My overall facial plastic surgery practice that it deserves its own video. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Jonathan Zelkin, a board certified plastic surgeon. Today I wanna to discuss the platysma muscle and I wanna spend all day talking about it. The platysma muscle is a paired band-like muscle. It's almost maybe a third or a quarter of the thickness of your hand, spanning from your mid face all the way down to your chest, all the way to your shoulders and even to the trapezius muscle in your back. It goes all the way up sometimes to the muscles near your eye and the muscles that make you smile. And it is actually kind of huge, but doesn't really serve a purpose. Now, the platysma muscle, I mean, it kind of starts underneath your jaw and it comes out and really what does it do? It contracts and by contraction, it does contribute to certain facial expressions and it is synergistic with muscles that depress the corner of your lip. So there is importance to it. It's also an important landmark in like trauma surgery for penetrating trauma to the neck. So it's an important structure, but it definitely contributes to facial aging. A lot of times when patients come to me for a facial plastic surgery consult, they are looking for options to make their neck bands go away, their neck skin, their wrinkly neck skin go away. And when patients think of wrinkly neck skin, a lot of times they're thinking of what they, they consider to be pleating, like the pleating of a curtain or a valence down their neck with redundant skin. But little do they realize that many of these lines, these folds are not redundant skin, but the appearance of muscle through a thin subcutaneous fat layer. A lot of times when people come to me, I'll ask them to bite down and smile, and it sounds weird, and they kind of just do this, and they're like, you know, why? As though they're brushing their teeth. But really what I'm asking them to do is to activate their platysma muscle by biting down and smiling. And every single band you see in your neck is not redundant skin, but it is bands of this muscle contracting and bowstringing. And the thinner your neck skin is, the more redundant and loose and thin and, and poor quality your skin is, the more you're gonna see this. With time, you start to see this at rest, and this is a telltale sign of facial aging. I have innumerable patients who want a facelift, but their faces look great, yet they're very enticing patients to me because their neck is showing signs of platysmal banding. Now, how do we make platysmal bands go away? Before I answer that question, I wanna talk about how I make them worse. I already started talking about it. I think genetic predilection towards it, like if your dad and mom have it, you're more likely to have it. I think certain anatomic features, but really, thin skin envelope with lack of elasticity and lack of subcutaneous fat is the easiest way to start to see platysmal banding. Now, the other way to make it more obvious, obviously, is to do liposuction or over-aggressive liposuction in a neck of an aging face. I think if people who have very thin skin or are already predisposed to this and they want, for example, liposuction and radiofrequency skin tightening, when I say no, it's not because I mean, it's because I think we're gonna we're gonna reveal these platysmal bands more clearly. And so it's really important to think of another strategy. Strategies to make them go away is probably why most of you guys are watching this video. Um, the easiest thing that we can do is uh, Botox. Botox is a really smart uh, way, somebody thought about it years ago, of weakening the muscle. If you think about it, I can make the bands more noticeable by flexing and contracting those muscles. So if I denervate that muscle with neurotoxin, I can actually soften them. This is a pretty effective way at uh, erasing or at least softening milder platysma bands close to the midline. And usually you're gonna see an upside down triangle, a very narrow upside down triangle right here is where they form in a lot of my aging patients. 
The second thing that we can do becomes a little bit more intense. It's called a platysmoplasty. There are certain instruments that are available, but what I really like to do is divide and interrupt this muscle for a long time. I think the muscle provides a lot of good, and I think it shouldn't be taken away altogether, but I do think that in a facelift, for example, we can convert these paired drapes into a hammock. We can take basically a uh, structure that extends from the corners of your chin down to your chest and we can resuspend it backwards and upwards. And so when I perform a facelift procedure, I, and in my practice facelift and neck lift are usually one and the same, I will work very hard at treating platysma muscle related issues, uh, but more importantly making sure they don't come back. Historically, in a facelift, what we'll do is something called a corset platysmoplasty, where we literally sew the two halves of the platysma muscle together like a shoelace, and then we resuspend the side. That's called lateral suspension. Unfortunately, a lot of plastic surgeons have sort of resigned to the fact that recurrence of platysmal banding in the midline is the rule and not the exception. I'm not willing to give up that easily. In my practice, I perform in many cases something called a myotomy, a complete division along the width of the platysma muscle, and then I resuspend the muscle, the upper half of it posteriorly. That way the edges of it can't scar back together and the likelihood of band recurrence is much lower. The other benefit of resuspending that muscle in a posterior fashion like this hammock is that a lot of the floor of the mouth muscles and the salivary glands that can descend get resuspended by a stout muscular structure. Now when you do this, it doesn't cause any additional pain, it does cause a little bit of an increased risk to the patient, but realistically it's a very well tolerated procedure that benefits both younger patients seeking beautification and older patients seeking to eliminate shadows in their neck. So the platysma muscle, there you have it. You can treat it with Botox, you can treat it with surgery, and you don't have to treat it at all. Sometimes liposuction makes these bands more noticeable, and sometimes being a thin person with lax skin makes it more noticeable. Regardless of the reason, there is a solution. You don't have to do anything at all if you don't want to, but if it's something that bothers you, A, it's great to know what it is, B, it's great to know your treatment options, and C, most importantly, it's great to know somebody who cares as much about it as you do. If you have any questions or concerns or you want to know more about the platysma muscle or you want to see graphic videos of it, please do schedule a consultation and I can share some of this information with you on a more intimate and personal level. Thank you so much. If you like this type of video, please do not hesitate to ask questions, comment below, and subscribe. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.